Our voices. Our stories. Our community. Singer-songwriter David Archibald's song, Spirit of the Inland Sea, pays homage to the Great Lakes and the communities that surround them, including the city of Kingston. It lies on the eastern part of Lake Ontario, at the entrance of the St. Lawrence River, and it's at the heart of our story. The spirit of which Archibald sings is embodied and infused throughout the community. There's the Wolf Island Ferry, a tried, tested and true attraction, and stalwart for residents and visitors alike. One of the Martello Towers sits prominently at the scenic waterfront, just one of the many relics and reminders of the city's rich military history. Queen's University and its long tradition of academic excellence and research is another core element to Kingston's essence. At the Kingston Public Market, the oldest market in Ontario, the sense of community is as palpable and perhaps as nourishing as the fresh produce and goods for offer. And then there's the vibrant arts and cultural scene. Our story is about a special celebration within this community, a community growing ever more diverse and nurturing as it provides many outlets for artistic expression for people of all abilities. That's a hall for what? For squirrels! No shortage of that expression at a boisterous art class in downtown Kingston, where students are creating and presenting their works. I'm Catherine Porter, Executive Director of the Heart Centre. 20 years ago, I was working with a young man with Down syndrome and exploring my career as an artist and moved to Kingston to continue that. Uh, when I moved here, I thought of incorporating the fine arts with those with disabilities simply because of this young man with Down syndrome. The long and short of it, it just blossomed over the years and simply the art and the interest that the special needs have in the arts and uh, sharing that with others really is easy, no-brainer thing to do. The Heart Centre is simple. Um, it grew after tw 20 years into three different areas of interest. Uh, the Heart School itself focuses primarily on adults with developmental challenges, 19 all the way to 100 years old. And, and they work in all aspects of the arts. They have a lot of fun with professionally trained artists exploring music, dance, theatre, storytelling. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few others. And then there's the box theatre, which is another huge space that we have that enables our participants and the local population with other disabilities to use for theatre or dance or, or voice or festivals any kind of arts gathering that they would like. And then the third thing is um, Hart has set up Able Artist Program where we bring in professional artists who have worked with people with special needs or who have development or who have disabilities themselves that wish to share it to a targeted audience. So the Able Artists work with the practitioners of tomorrow, the educators of tomorrow, Heart, spelled H apostrophe A R T, Center, is celebrating its 20th anniversary. And the crowning jewel of this celebration comes in the form of a play. It's called A Gift from Martadella, an inspiring musical for anyone who believes they have more to give. Okay, we're starting. My name is Catherine Mackay, and I am the director of A Gift from Martadella. In A Gift from Martadella, uh, we revisit uh, the characters who played the uh, maiden characters in Martadella's Gift. So 20 years on, 20 years on, they have a child. Uh, their child, like the lead in Martadella's Gift, is mute and, um, and ha presents her own challenges to them as parents. But uh, this play is about more about following your dreams. It's about expectations and slotting people into where we think they should be and not really hearing what they're telling you they want to do. The conceit of the play is that the two actors who played Martadella and her um, eventual husband, uh, and the hero of the play, Salametti, um, 
they have uh, gone on. Neither of them have become professional performers, and they have a pizzeria. And they have a daughter named Stella, who, like Martadella in the play, is mute, but she can hear. And so um, they have these challenges with Stella, very similar to what they faced in the play itself. I'll sing with you. I'm David Archibald, and I am the co-writer of the script and the music, and I'm an actor in the show as well. My connection goes back probably a dozen years or so, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and playwright, and I was just brought in to help with uh, various productions. So I've uh, performed the role of facilitator, for the students at, at heart to write music. We write music together often. And also, I, I've been participating in the shows as musical director or composer as well. I'm Kathy Toss Switzer, and I'm co-writer of the script and the music for A Gift from Martadella. I'm also the co-writer and director of, and uh, script writer of the first production that, that um, Hart did which was called Martadella's Gift. I've been involved with Hart since their, the very beginning. Uh, I was uh, on their board of directors at the very beginning, um, and I, I was involved with them because I'm a retired special education teacher and have taught uh, students, adults with developmental disabilities for 16 years, and then children. We are the pizza makers. On set, the energy and enthusiasm of the actors is infectious. After the break, we meet a longtime member and artist of the Heart Center who typifies the heart and soul of this community. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. The conductor of the musical score for the play marking the Heart Center's 20th anniversary marvels at the growth and abilities of the students. I personally am so excited that they are now also in the pit playing instruments. So they, they are participating in all aspects of the theater production in this, in this particular production. And I think that's amazing. Uh, B is a Lake Joseph Center. We were sharing this space there. Um, we had it during the program. We had, is it low vision loss? I mean, they're blind. They're blind, can't hear, can't talk. Karen Olivier is a longtime artist and member of the Heart Center. She's one of a number of her friends and fellow artists involved in the musical score of the performance. I learned the different instruments, Kathy, and showed me how to do everything. Karen Olivier came to the Heart Center when it was Heart School uh, almost 17 years ago. Uh, she came as an individual that needed prompting and support into coming out and actually participating with others. She hadn't hooked into the Special Olympics, she hadn't hooked into anything else. Her parents, extremely uh, uh, incredible people and very French Canadian, uh, wanted her to explore the arts because they they have their own personality. So. Uh, Karen started drumming and started to work uh, alongside other able-bodied artists that come to the Heart Centre and before long there was an understanding of just what she could do and couldn't do. Uh, her parents kept sharing that she had lived independently, was with CNIB and had done so well. Now they were prepared to have her more integrated with um, I guess sightseeing people and um, and engaged in art so that regardless of how her eyesight was going to, to, to go, like the prognosis wasn't good at the time, but since then she's had surgeries, her energy is good, her artwork is articulate, and she's just wonderful. She's participating in everything that we have. Her center is a learning uh, dis disability and teach the student here a heart. Um, I know I know them. I know uh, 
one person name is Catherine Porter. I know I know her since a long, long time ago. Uh, the my uh, history student. I know her uh, 18 years. I know Catherine Porter. Her visual impairment is actually. Um, created works of art that you would never imagine happening and uh, part of the, our rule of thumb is that there's no editing there's no um, no touching of the artist's work so what you end up with with a Karen Olivier is a very um, articulate piece and I use that word because she spends the time making sure lines meet lines and colors are, are not all over the map and because of her diligence and her focus um, her work is exceptional and it's, it's, mo it's all centered around just her experiences of being somebody who has low vision. In addition to the artistic hub, the Heart Centre provides community coordinated arts programs for seniors, including those living with disabilities. It's called HAP, the Heart Accessible Arts Program. Several times a week, trained artists and volunteers travel to long-term care residences across Kingston. The HAP program is, has become very important and almost self-sustaining after three years. Volunteer committees within each of the long-term care, and these are publicly funded, are now pitching in to cover the costs. And, and the, artists, uh, the professional artists um, have worked here first before they move over into that environment. Um, and then when they're over there, they're actually trained by the staff and by the administration on how to work with that aging population that, again, has a whole pile of other things that we have to consider. The artists walk into a room and they are sensitive and, and assured that they can manage to deliver their uh, program because we've already trained the artists or hired, not the artists, but the uh, assistants. When the dance class for Parkinson's or when the uh, sit and dance class or the storytelling happens, the volunteers are also coached on how to take cues from the professional artist so that the um, opportunity for the experience is shared and more enhanced. Stella, don't forget the purchase orders. Back at the Heart Centre, the rehearsals for the musical are winding down and the time to opening night draws near. Over the years, I helped them develop um, shows, and what it's eventually led to is I've seen this. Uh, some members of this population have incredible talents, and I think they could be pushed further, and they could work on a real professional level. So what I've done is I've started my own um, company with David Archibald and um, Melissa Mahadi Wilton called Peerless Productions, which is um, focused on promoting and producing professional productions featuring artists with disabilities and mixed abilities. There's a rigor and there is a way of looking at the world that's really unique that hasn't been seen so far and that um, there's a commitment and there's also um, just there's a bravery that that I've seen and um, and a, a, a total unselfconsciousness in terms of wanting to talk to people and tell a story. And, um, and I, th I think it makes for a really interesting theatre. We are the pizza makers. Our pizza's the best in the world. Despite the play's serious message, the actors remind us there's a focus on fun and a premium on playfulness. We're entertaining, but the, and there's a, a serious message as well but there are full-on choreographed dance numbers as well as the songs that, that you saw today. So uh, there, there is a lot going on and they will be joined by professional musicians. Um, so there, there's players from Heart Centre in the orchestra and they will be joined by... Yeah, um, professional musicians in the community, the artists that come in to work with the folks um, and end up uh, learning from them an amazing amount about new ways of thinking and thinking outside the box, <laughs> uh, new ways of thinking and learning. Um, so there's a huge uh, connection and attraction from people in the community to come in and offer their talents and learn from, from the participants as well. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. 
The payoff for all the hard work and rehearsals is at hand. Three performances at the Isabel Bader Center for the Performing Arts, so very appropriate as the venue represents the epitome of accessibility and inclusion. For Karen Olivier, artist and member of the Heart Center, the excitement is difficult to contain. I feel excited because I can't wait for that show. It's a great honor and of all the awards I've received, having been given this this afternoon, made by Heart participants. I'm Patricia Bovey, independent senator for Manitoba. The Heart Center here in Kingston is a pioneer in Canada, I believe, for the way they have worked with, celebrated, encouraged the independent artistic thought of our adult population who have difficulties and challenges. Stella do this, Stella do that. No time to sit, there's no, no time, time to chat. chat. One of the nice things about Hart is there's a, an incredible continuity. It's such a great place that people, once they become students here, often stay students for a very long time. So you really do get to see the progression. Elena, you remember Stella from the restaurants? This is your appointment. I thought she was supposed to work with professionals. It's, in one word, extraordinary. Look at what they're capable of. Look at the volume of lines that they've had to learn and memorize and they're delivering the goods. Um, and with only a few um, supportive prompts and cues around what to do, what props to get, how to move on stage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and the joy, you can see. I mean, they know, okay, I don't know my line, they say line. You know, they're very, they've learned how to be actors and in a professional way. And they understand the, the, the repetition of the scenes over and over again, what the role and the characters are all about. Um, they, they get inside them in a way that they had no concept of 20 years ago and the joy and the self-esteem about what they're capable of. Don't need your ears to feel the music. Don't need your voice to sing the song. You know, if I had one wish, I'd like all municipal cities to fund the organizations that excel in one particular area and that whether it's immigration services that are doing cultural days or heart center, uh, doing uh, work for the people with disabilities. I just think that there's just too many levels and, and cumbersome applications to fill. I think if you're doing a job and you're doing it well, I think municipalities should start to consider subcontracting versus looking at people fighting or, or debating for funds because it's just killing uh, it, the energy that's out there. There's a lot of healthy organizations, community engagers that are able to bring in large numbers of people closer to the arts. Uh, especially with our Deaf Spirit Theatre, we had a blind choir. I mean, those initiatives could carry on much further if we didn't have to keep writing grants for them. The impact of heart in the city of Kingston has been very good and healthy and it keeps on growing. It uh, is partnering up with many different other organizations, community engagers I guess you could call them, uh, through immigration services or uh, art schools that are interested in, in our ways of training artists to work with this population to long-term care homes where we have placements of professionally trained artists who want to work um, in inclusive, or we call it the inclusive arts, it's called HAP, Hearts Accessible Arts Program, where the artists are now able to bring in somebody who's in a publicly funded retirement home into an activity because they're aware of the needs to accommodate and support that individual that might be deaf or blind or have an acquired brain injury. So uh, everybody's included, not just the elderly who might be there just to grow old, but those who have disabilities. I have been connected with Heart because Catherine Porter and I are kindred spirits around showcasing the abilities 
of this special population. And so my big message is, I want everyone in, in the community to, to be amazed by what the capabilities are, what the abilities are, and not be focusing on the disabilities. I take my hat off to them for their vision and the, for per, their persistence in realizing that vision and their compassion for the special needs community and their families. And the sooner we as a society can understand that need and that depth, the richer as a community we're going to be. In the last 20 years, I'd say we've done millions of audiences and millions of people, and not directly. Through our websites and social media and word of mouth and the university students that our students attend classes or participate in, or the students that came away from a performance that are, are going to be our doctors of tomorrow or our educators. The play is a hit. The hard work has paid off. The performers are enjoying the audience's outpouring of appreciation. At the reception afterwards, the delicious piece of anniversary cake for all to enjoy is almost as sweet as the aura of the evening and the spirit of David Archibald's musical finale. What can we do about Stella? Being so inclusive, so creative in so many different disciplines, and the fact that it, it really does feel like family here. You come in here and there is real joy and love and it's a, it's a terrific place. What can we do about Stella? What can we do? I think the Heart Centre deserves all the support it can get and, and more. Uh, it's a unique facility in this area for sure, and perhaps in the country. I love Edmonton. I'm very happy and about um, Kathy works so hard with, with us. I enjoy it at the orchestra. It's a community and it reminds us that uh, there are so many stories out there that we don't hear. And we think, oh, you know, I go to the theater, I read books, I go to films, whatever. But they're, to a certain extent, always presented in a similar way, and they're from the same sort of population. And so when you hear the stories that are being told through heart, then what I'm aware of is, wow, these stories wouldn't have been heard if it wasn't for Catherine Porter starting heart. And what other stories are there out there that we're missing out on? And wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to access them? So. Let's keep trying to hear. Writer-producer David Battistelli. Camera operators Willie Purstall, Michael Sudinger. Editors Willie Purstall, Miriam Bakhtiar. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Original music, David Archibald, Spirit of the Inland Sea. Special thanks, Heart Board of Directors, Kingston Symphony Orchestra, Isabel Bader Center for the Performing Arts, Dan School of Drama and Music, Senator Patricia Bovey. Production Supervisor, Janice Sevatilli. Director Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. Vice President Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2018, Accessible Media Incorporated.